Here is what a dirty fuel filter looks like. This is what I think diesel bug looks like. Watch this video and learn the steps to change your diesel engine's fuel filters and stay to the end to see how we bleed the air from the fuel system. Hi, I'm Sailor Eric. And if you are interested in sailing and boat maintenance, you have come to the right channel. Let's start with a quick overview of the fuel system because this is one of the primary causes of engine trouble. The fuel intake hose comes from the fuel tank and feeds the redundant primary filters here. There is a valve to choose which of the two primary filters is active. From here, the hose feeds to the low pressure fuel lift pump. This pump is normally fitted with a manual pump handle to facilitate bleeding the system. The hose then leads to the secondary fuel filter. The secondary filter is meant to make extra sure that the fuel is clean before it is served up to the high pressure injection pump, which serves up atomized fuel for engine combustion. The remaining unused fuel is returned to the main fuel tank. We are going to be replacing both primary filters and the secondary filter today. All we need to do this job is some absorbent pads, a filter wrench, and some containers to put the old fuel and spent filters in. In addition, we will use paper towels and other cleaning items to clean the filter bowls if needed. We start by emptying out the fuel from one of the filter bowls. And then extracting the old filter from the top and placing it into a waiting container. We then insert a new filter and install new O-rings on the cover and on the T-handle. Then we refill the bowl from the fuel tank using the manual lift pump. It would be more efficient if we had some clean fuel handy in a small jerry can to simply pour it into the bowl, but this works as well, it's just slower. We repeat this process for the second Raycor primary filter. There is a big difference with the fuel in the bowl of this filter as opposed to the first filter. I can see darker discolored substance settled in the bowl. I believe this to be evidence of diesel bug from the fuel tank, and it shows that this filter is doing its job of separating out unwanted particles from the fuel. Bear in mind that my boat is 47 years old and still has the original aluminum fuel tank. I can understand how the tank itself may have accumulated some particles and grime over time, but I have not had a problem with the engine starting or running since owning Silver Heels over the past six years. See this video for fuel inspection tips and how to prevent or address fuel problems. I'll also link it at the end of this video. Next, I want to clean inside this bowl, so I have to pull it off. To pull off the bowl, I have to remove four small, hard to reach hex nuts. So I use a one quarter inch ratchet head on a screwdriver. I then clean out the leftover crud using paper towels and wooden Q-tips. This is what I think diesel bug looks like. Then I inserted a new filter installed new O-rings, and set everything up for repriming. I then replace the bowl, which is a little tedious, but necessary. This time, before pumping in fuel, I also extract the old secondary filter and replace it. I leverage a filter wrench to loosen the filter until I can hand screw and remove the filter, being careful to spill as little fuel as possible from inside the filter. This is why the absorbent pads are important, as the fuel can easily spill out as it did here. 
I then get the new filter ready for installation. Easy enough, I screw on the new filter after lubricating the O-ring and lastly, tighten it with the filter wrench. Now it's time to pump in new fuel into the second primary filter bowl and subsequently into the new secondary filter. And as a last step, bleed the air from the system. You loosen this bleed screw to allow air to escape and manually pump the lift pump until fuel works its way through the system and leaks out of this opening. I then quickly tighten the screw to secure the vacuum in the fuel system. Leaving air in the system can prevent the engine from starting or cause sputtering to my limited understanding. Since this is my first time doing this myself, I'm still going to have the mechanics at the boatyard inspect and start the engine before I deliver her to Monroe Harbor for the summer season. We all have slightly different boats with slightly different engines and slightly different space constraints. So your implementation is likely gonna be slightly different than mine. But the concepts are all sound and there are other YouTube videos for you to check out to go over this information from other sources. Also, check out this book by Denison Berwick, which has been a great reference for me. For my subscribers, I wanna say thank you so much for your support. I really appreciate your uh, support through this process. If you've stayed to the end of this video, please press that like button. It's free for you and it greatly increases the chances that others will have the opportunity to watch it. This is Sailor Eric. Thanks for watching.